So go ahead and get started. Feel free to keep populating the chat with uh, who you're ripping, who you are. Um, definitely welcoming you all to this space. Um, this is a very relaxed event. Um, this is something that Adriana, Julio, and I uh, thought up, and we're thinking, let's keep it very chill. Let's let's provide some tips and tricks, things that helped us. Uh, in our academic journey, and we hope that will help you all in yours. Um, Adriana is going to start us off, but if you want to populate questions or concerns in the chat, please feel free to do so. If we miss it for whatever reason, we do have a Q&A section at the end. Um, at the end, we also have an event evaluation uh, we would like to fill you out. We have four $25 gift cards to be selected at random. Uh, for those of you that complete the event evaluation. Uh, so I'm going to turn it over to Adriana. Thank you. Thank you, Luli. Or thank you, Loyola. Oh my gosh. I'm sorry. It's definitely a Tuesday afternoon. Uh, hello, everybody. Yatish, Adriana. So, Yanishiak, Zulana, Nishlin, Kiani, Bashishin, Sedesh, Gizhi, Dashchek, Oge, Dashinola. Hello, everybody. My name is Adriana, and I see some familiar faces in here. Hello, Cassandra. <laughs> Uh, I am a college success coach with the American Indian College Fund, along with these two. And like Loyola mentioned, um, we're just going to be sharing a few tips and tricks that have really helped us um, through our own academic journey, both undergrad and then graduate, and now some, you know, doctorate too. And I have the privilege of going first and talking to you all about um, some organizational tricks that'll help you. Um, just kind of get your schedule set to go. It can be your daily schedule. It can be your personal schedule or just kind of getting yourself into a routine, just some helpful tricks that would help all of us. And while we all have a lot of similar experiences and similarities that we can share, um, we all come from very different backgrounds and are, are in our own little uh, individual places in our academic journey as well. So um, let's go ahead and get started. So this is me again. Um, a different hair color <laughs> but um i attended high school at navajo preparatory school from 2012 to 2016 so you can do the math on that on my age i guess um but it was a college preparatory school and i got to stay in on the dorms or in the residential halls for all four years and then after that i ventured all the way off to oregon where i played volleyball for pacific university and i stayed there for two years 2016 to 2018 and then I finished out my bachelor's degree transferring to Fort Lewis College from 2018 to 2020, 2020. So if you have any Skyhawks in here, go Skyhawks. Um, but yes, I was a transfer student, uh, first generation. I went through the first year experience and doing everything on my own, figuring out the um, academic journey on my own, but not necessarily on my own because I did look at other support services on campus as well and found a lot of um, community there. So like I said, I'm going to be talking a lot about the organizational aspect of it and kind of setting up your own schedule. So this might be, um, some of y'all might have seen a previous presentation of mine, but I'm really into being organized and kind of working on your routine, getting your daily schedule down to a T. And, um, you know, I was recently diagnosed with ADHD at the beginning of this year, so um, our team is very neurodivergent here, <laughs> but um, as we go along, we find out a lot of different things that help us kind of stay organized in our day. And I just want to share a few tips that I found to be very helpful for me in my undergrad and even now in my um, early professional career. So everybody has a daily schedule and um, it's really up to you how you keep track of your day. So in the chat, I want you all to kind of um, put down some ideas of how you keep track of your day. Do you use sticky notes? Uh, do you use a personal reminder app on your phone? I know I set a lot of reminders on my phone, even just to get up, <laughs> um, you know, to feed my cats, to go to the gym, you know, just to kind of keep me keep track of my day. Uh, do you use an online calendar? You know, um, in my current setting right now, I use my work calendar a lot and I put some of my own personal stuff in there as well, just to let everybody know, you know, when I'm going to be out of the office, whether it's on PTO or um, sick leave, if you have an appointment or something. Um, but, you know, a, a lot of online calendars come from different platforms. We have Microsoft Outlook, which we use at the College Fund. There's Google Calendar. Um, those are the only two that I really know, but I know that you can create different templates as well. 
uh, sticky notes, notepads, reminder apps, a physical planner. Um, I definitely use a physical planner and online calendar the most in my undergraduate journey. And let's see, everybody's putting in the chat. Alondra uses a reminder app on phone, sticky notes, outlook calendar, to-do list provided by tribal administrator. Nice, awesome. So here are some things that I thought were really interesting and really important to include in your schedule just to kind of help jot some things down if you're kind of at a blank sitting with your planner or your calendar. So if you're in school right now, class times, put out your class times when you have to go to class and then put some leeway in there of how much it'll take you to travel to class, whether that's walking from your residential hall to your um, building on campus, or maybe you're commuting every day, you live off campus and you have to put in that commuting time. Um, also study times as well. So um, how much time are you allocating for yourself to go sit down at the library or to go find a you know study space and how much are you giving yourself time to study? And then any other important deadlines. So, um, these things can be, you know, like a, a big paper project that you have to write or another research project or maybe like a big assignment that you have to do, maybe a team project or something. And um, a really good tip to give to you all um, to find important deadlines, especially pertaining around academics, is to look at your class schedule or class syllabus, excuse me. Uh, class syllabuses are usually, is it syllabi or syllabuses? I can't. <laughs> but um, you can finally you can find usually at the beginning of your classes. Usually the first week, a lot of people will call a syllabus week because that's when the first time you're going to um, class and your professors are going to be talking to you about what's all in the syllabus. And usually on the syllabuses, it'll have a class schedule or a glance <laughs> at a glance look at the semester outline of your classes, semester or tri semester or um, quarters. I know some people have different outlines of that but it'll usually note down you know exams exam dates what the exams will kind of cover which topics uh big papers that you have to prepare for maybe some big like um other individual projects that you have to think about and those are just good to look at and to jot down really quickly in your calendar that way you have it there and then what the really cool with the calendars too is that you can set a notification reminder as well so it'll pop up on your screen and say oh you have a big research project due in a week or so and then you can kind of set yourself out to um, plan how you're going to do that uh, club organization meetups you know there's a lot of different things that are thrown at you a lot of opportunities while you're in your undergraduate and in college in general um, so if you are attending any of those, if you sit on a board or if you are a part of any clubs, definitely important to also jot down um, some times that you're going to be meeting up or any important meetup times. And then, you know, a lot of our students, any students, college students, uh, we wear many different hats. So some of us, you know, work full time jobs, some of us work part time jobs, maybe you're a caretaker, maybe you're a parent, um, a guardian, you know, so many different things. Jot that down in your schedule too. So it's going to be filling up really nice. But for some reason, I love a full uh, schedule just to see that makes me feel like I'm busy and I'm being productive. And then um, I just jot this down too when you need to pick up your kids or grandkids. You know, just think about all the different aspects in your life. And um, the really cool thing too is that you can sync up your accounts with your school email or calendar. And I have a little diagram of how to do that. So this is generally how I usually do it. And again, this is through the Outlook version because then we use Outlook here, but like you can do the same thing with um, your Apple calendar or you can do it with Google calendar as well. Um, but you know, this is just an example. So we have a mental health talking circle and I signed up with it. And usually it gives you a confirmation email giving you the Zoom links and everything. And then this little red section right here, that's where you'll see where um, you can download the calendar invites. So you can add it to your, cal your Apple calendar, your Google Calendar, Yahoo Calendar, or your Outlook Calendar. So you would just click on either one of those links and then it'll prompt up a download. So this, you can see the download right here. You just click on that and then it'll automatically pop up to your calendar um, if you use an online calendar. And you can see here that it saves all the information, the title, the date, the time. The time zone is a really important thing to um, note here as well and then the location, and it'll have all the Zoom invite information here. So um, what's really cool with this too, is you can code it however you want. I know I really love to color code. So for personal things, I color code it green. For all work-related things, it's all blue. And then I also lead the first year experience program as well. So 
um, just to differentiate that, I color code as orange. And for any um, of our coaching events, I usually color code it as um, I think it's another shade of blue. I didn't do it here, but I usually do it. And um, then you can also include any other invites you want to send. Um, you can send it to your friend. You can send it to maybe, I don't know, a classmate, anything you can, um, anybody you want to submit that to. And then usually it pops right up to your calendar and you can see that it's um, linked right here in green. So mental health in circle. So that's really cool. And it's a really easy hack to just kind of get something on your calendar, you know, whether it's an advising appointment or, um, you know, a mental health event like we host here at the College Fund, or even just jotting down some time with your friends to go eat dinner. I know sometimes we would do that in college. So here are some more scheduling supports to plan out your week. Um, for me, Sundays are a really great day to reset. Um, it's just kind of a good beginning of the week thing. You can sit down at your table or you know, kind of put yourself in a neutral zone and uh, write down everything. You know, you can put it on your to-do list, your sticky note, you can get out your physical planner, you can break out your laptop and, you know, um, fill up your calendar of different things, you know, class, work schedule, when you need to pick up the kids, when you need to attend a certain meeting or, you know, you need to go to this uh, doctor's appointment. It's just a really good day to kind of sit down and plan out your week. And, um, you know, color coding, like I said, I'm a really big advocate for color coding just because, again, I was diagnosed with ADHD and color code coding helps me organize my thinking because if I just have everything in blue, it's going to overwhelm me just thinking about how many things I have to do over the week and it makes a lot of important items stand out as well. So, um, again, you can use your class syllabus to note big project assignments and deadlines for your academic schedule and then just thinking about other personal things as they come through your email you can put them in your calendar and establishing a routine for me has been the most helpful in times, especially when things are being unpredictable, uncertain, and it definitely lessens stress because you're aware of where you need to be at what time. And once you really start getting that routine down, um, you'll start to just automatically know where you need to go. And it's kind of like muscle memory. And, you know, when, un when um, uncertain things pop up or random things pop up, you know, let's say it's a you know, you, your kid has a basketball game or something, or you have to go to a doctor's appointment, you'll know throughout the day or throughout the week when you have the most free time to go do whatever, you know, so it kind of just gives you a little bit of at ease, you know, with your mind and helps you just know where you need to be. And um, yeah, so I just have a few examples of what I use. Like I said, I use my Google calendar a lot. And now I use my work calendar a lot. And then I also use a lot of my own um, Planners. I love planners. I love stationery, pens, highlighters, notebooks, um, sticky notes. Give them all to me because I will use every single one of them. But you can see I love color coding. I would put study times at a different time, classes, and just the different shades too helps me kind of organize my mind. And then I love check boxes as well. So I'll put checkbox near assignments that I need to do. And then just at the end of the week, when you get to check off that last thing you need to do, it's so fulfilling. Um, I know a lot of us can relate to that, but definitely, definitely find something that helps you and find something that works. And it's not going to happen just like that. You know, you might try one thing, you might try to get a planner and then forget to, you know, plan out your weeks at the beginning of the week and it's just blank. Um, but, you know, just find what works for you, even if it's just writing it down, using an online calendar, using your reminder apps, um, just having something to kind of help you keep accountability of yourself and where you need to, where you need to be just to keep track of yourself is very, very vital um, while your time in undergrad. And it'll come, you know, a second nature as you start to go along in your undergraduate journey and then continuing on into higher education. So thank you all so much. Um, that's my section. So now we're going to pass it on over to Julio, I believe. Yes. Awesome. Okay. All right, I'm going to share my screen real quick. Let's see. Okay. All right. Oh, Loyola, are you, on, are you able to see that? Okay, awesome. Thank you. All right, everybody. So just to kind of introduce myself again, uh, my name is Julio Barron. I'm one of the other college success coach here that works here at the American Indian College Fund. Uh, and I'm calling from Oklahoma City, Oklahoma currently. Uh, so yeah, just a little bit about me, you know. So uh, I have my the schools listed that I've been to. 
So high school for me, I went to Santa Fe South High School uh, here in Oklahoma City. Uh, and then after that, uh, I still stayed in the same state, of course. Uh, uh, I, I had a dream of like, you know, going to University of Oklahoma or in other words, you know, OU. Uh, it's a big uh, football, you know, type of like sports, like school and stuff, you know. But of course, I wanted to go there for education, but also the the sports, which is kind of uh, kind of a plus for me. So I enjoyed uh, my time there. So I was there from 2012 to 2021. Uh, so just to kind of break it down a little bit. So uh, uh, I'm a first generation college student. So it took me a little bit longer than expected to like get my undergrad, but that's okay. Uh, it took me five years. So from 2020, uh, 2012 to 2017, uh, that's when I was able to get my, uh, two of my bachelor's degrees from there. And then I took a break in the middle. Uh, and then I started my... Uh, my uh, grad school for my master's from 2018 to 2020, uh, 2021, a bunch of 20s today. Uh, so I, I went there for that. And then after that, I just took a very small break, you know, just because it's okay to take breaks in between all your schooling and everything. Uh, and then I got accepted into my doctoral program, which I'm currently in right now. Uh, I just started my second year right now. So I'm doing my uh, doctor of education in higher education uh, administration. Uh, so I'm going to Grand Canyon University and I'm doing it via online. Uh, and that's useful for me just because for my master's, I did it all online uh, and I got used to that format and also just kind of keeps me, uh, you know, uh, with my full-time job as well too. So it's, it's pretty easy to manage, uh, you know, if you have good time management skills, which uh, it took me a while to get there, you know, but of course, you know, hopefully with the, with the skills you already currently have right now, or just, you know, things to, that you learn from Argiana, you know, th those things, I use some of those already. Uh, and I hopefully you learn something from that. It just helped me, especially now that I, I'm fairly new to having ADHD as well. Uh, I got diagnosed in March of this year. So it's just a very different mindset and stuff. But uh, uh, with, with the right uh, medical professionals and, you know, uh, you know, little tips and, you know, how to use journals and calendars and stuff, I use these types right here, you know, so like, the, I guess they're called the just writing pads and stuff or legal pads. Uh, I use those all the time. So it's very useful for me. Uh, and that's what kind of like kind of helped me, you know, throughout my schooling and stuff like that. So uh, again, you know, I was in uh, schooling was very hard for me, you know, at first, but like it took me a while, you know, to get, get used to it. And then I was able to learn skills and techniques, you know, from mentors and stuff. Uh, but yeah, no, just uh, for the next thing, you know, this is kind of like a, a useful thing to have uh, is just building those connections. So uh, for me, for instance, um, I, I was very shy, you know, uh, coming into uh, undergrad and everything. Um, it was very hard for me to connect with people or maybe it was just a culture shock of me going to like a big, uh, a big institution and stuff like that. I didn't see a lot of people like me um uh, i'm mexican just just to uh, just kind of give that out there uh so it took me a while you know to connect with others you know but it took me uh had to go i had to go make friends on my own so i was like i have to push myself to get out there so a very funny and very memorable story about me is uh after my parents left me <laughs> i was in my dorm room and then after that i was like well, there goes my family, then <laughs> they're gone. And then I just started crying a little bit and that's okay, you know, but it was just a, a life changing. It is a new experience. So I was like, all right, I'm gonna go outside my door and go make some friends. And and the funny story is, is like I, literally after I got out my door and I turned right, there was another roommate that was coming out and he looked left and was like, hey, I'm Julio, hey, I'm Jose. And that was my other, my other roommate on the side. And ever since that day, we talk about the story all the time because right now he's, you know, uh, he's still my, one of my good friends still, you know, he's my fraternity brother, he's been to my wedding, we we all go to each other's family functions and stuff, you know, so it's okay, you know, it, it tends to happen, so, uh, but just for this, you know, just building those connections, you know, just having uh, an elevator pitch, so, and what I mean by that is just kind of having a very uh, concise way of, like, introducing yourself to others, you know, sharing like two uh key points of yourself and then also being confident as well too when you talk to others uh and this has to do with you know building new friends or you know getting to know new connections like your professors advisors uh and then also professors that you have in classes and stuff like that or just people you meet 
uh, just being in the school environment. Uh, and with those building connections and everything, you know, mentorship opportunities might come up as well too. Um, and then just like, I'm just curious to kind of see uh, for anybody in the audience, uh, if you do have a, a mentor or or someone that you look, that you, uh, is kind of like a role model, you have a support system, uh, put it down in the, in the chat. I kind of want to hear uh, what everyone has in the, as for their support system. Um, and then for me, for instance, you know, I have a bunch of mentors and everything, you know, throughout my different stages of uh, academic life. Um, and also just other people that I know that are friends, you know, and they went in to become professors and everything, uh, or just uh, educators or people in the higher education realm and everything. So I kind of like um, get connections through those type of opportunities to help myself out, but also with the connections that I built, I'm able to help facil facilitate those same ideas and opportunities, you know, professionalism from them, you know, to share what programming that I do for the college fund and other places that, that I work with and stuff like that. So with those mentorship opportunities, you know, it's just being able to, you know, to help others, you know, and for yourself to, you know, have that support system while you're in school to be, uh, you know, be ready, you know, like, I need help with a math course, or I need help with English, or need someone to look at my writing, and then, you know, mentors and stuff like that are there for you, you know, to kind of help support you in any way. Um, and then for that instance, the next one is, uh, you know, asking assistance, you know, from the student support services that uh, that are currently exist at your current school. You know, every school is different, of course, university or college, wherever you go to, uh, there's always someone to kind of help you out, you know, and to be part of that support system. Uh, another thing that that kind of helped me, you know, in my career is the TRIO services. Uh, TRIO is a U United States uh, Department of Education federal federally funded uh, student supports that exist in some colleges and universities nationwide. Uh, for me, it kind of helped me with like tutoring, uh, you know, having someone look at my papers, a place to like uh, have free printing and also a good place to socialize with others. Uh, TRIO helps out first generation college students, um, people from low income uh, backgrounds, and then students with disabilities. Uh, and I like that, you know, just to be able to help out students in that nature. So if your school has that, I would definitely recommend, you know, to go to the TRIO services uh, department if they have it. Um, and also another thing, you know, just like if you don't have mentors or anything like that, ask your academic advisor, ask your professor, or ask anybody that you, you know, have direct contact with while you're at school. So let them know it's like, maybe they could be that mentor or that connection or just support system, you know, because uh, I always tell this to my students is like, you're not gonna be able to do schooling on your own. You need a, a support system around you. Uh, even if it's family, you know, relatives, you know, or people from school, you know, uh, people that have gone through the same uh, steps that you're about to go through or already gone through is the, you know, getting that degree uh, someday, you know, so surround yourself with good people. Uh, and then the last thing, you know, is just, you know, talk with other students, uh, you know, get out there, you know, make a study group, or maybe your school has like set times, you know, where like they have tutoring that exists already, or, or other students that you could get around with. Um, and then also, you know, student organizations around campus too, uh, specific organizations or clubs that exist, uh, you know, do, do some research or, you know, if your school has orientation, uh, sometimes they have booths that come up, you know, it's like, hey, come join us, join our club, uh, or hey, maybe you have an interest that, uh, that you like, and then they have it right there for you, so definitely do that as well. Um, so yeah, no, that's, uh, that's the importance of, like, building those connections, you know, having that support system and the, and the mentorship and everything, because it will help Motive, motivate you and support you uh, throughout your academic journey. And again, you know, just to kind of like the, the end things for this topic, you know, it's just like, you know, practice that elevator pitch on your own. Do it in front of a mirror or just do it like, uh, you know, say it out, uh, say it out loud or say it to others just to see if they could critique you in any way to make it better. Or if it's good, then it's good for sure. Uh, and, and then during this practice stuff, you become more confident and then when you do it in the outside world, you know, when you do it in, in person, you build build that confidence as well, too. Uh, for the mentor or just having someone to support you, uh, talk with them and see what availability they have. Maybe you could meet with that specific person 
once or twice a month, you know, but it just depends on you and then the other person, you know, just to build that camaraderie and uh, that helpfulness and support system. Uh, you know, join or make that study group, you know, maybe there isn't a study group, make it yourself up. And then after that, maybe you have a big group of it or just like a good close uh, few uh, friends or students like yourself, you know, to kind of gather together. Um, attend student run organizations around campus. So that's a good thing too. Uh, and then for my next one is just advising tips. Uh, so just a little bit of my background. So I was an academic advisor before at a community college. Uh, so some of this stuff just comes from my perspective, but also from all the students that I worked with as well. And then from all the advising sessions that I've been through throughout my, uh, uh, throughout my whole educational journey. So again, you know, it's like, you know, knowing who your academic advisor is, is like, who is that person that's taking that responsibility? Or maybe it's an advisor that's taking care of like students with last names A through E or, you know, v through z or something like that you know there maybe there's a specific person that's in uh responsible for you and your academic journey and everything uh that academic advisor is there to help you to like schedule your courses uh you know uh be able to take the hold off your account to like enroll into your classes finally because uh just from my, like for my school you know if depending if you're a freshman sophomore junior or senior uh, depending on the school you're going to, there's different holds and different times when you could like enroll into courses and everything. Uh, so like, you know, talk to the academic advisor just to have, you know, a, a schedule in your calendar or your journals like, hey, my classes are going to open up during this specific day. Uh, so just kind of keep that in mind to like, you know, get yourself ready and then also pick out the courses that you probably wanted to go through in, uh, in the next step. Um, and then for this next one, you know, just to like schedule time with your advisor, usually um, for students, you know, you maybe you do two advising sessions uh, per semester or maybe just once and that depends on you. Maybe you have a couple of questions that come up during the semester and you want to do another academic uh, uh, advisor session, do that as well too. Um, you just have to see what their availability is and see how many advisors exist at the, co at the college or university you go to. Uh, do your research. Uh, and when I mean do your research, it's like, uh, especially for our first generation college students, this is something I didn't know, but like you can look at the some of the degree sheets that exist. Um, at least for the university that I went to, I was able to kind of look at what majors exist, uh, what minors exist, and then see what courses you need to take to complete those uh, specific pro uh, programs. Uh, so that's something to kind of look uh, into as well. Um, the next one is, you know, uh, make your goal, uh, goals for yourself. And that could be anything to do with like semester goals, you know, uh, making uh, mock uh, uh, class schedules to see like, hey, if I pass all these courses, then I could get into this because some courses, you know, there's a prerequisite. Uh, and what, what, I mean, what I mean by prerequisite is like, for example, English one, or it could be English comp one or something. There's different languages for all of them, but it's practically the same thing. Um, you can't you can't get into English two without taking English one. So there, there's certain classes you could just take right away, but there's some courses you need to wait on until you finish the to uh, until you finish the prerequisite for the next course. So just kind of keep that in mind. And, and I'll show like a degree sheet, you know, just to kind of let you know what that is. Uh, but it's a very self-explanatory, so it should be easy. Um, and then the next thing, you know, just the advising, you know, is just like completing and passing your courses, you know, again, you know, everybody's different and everything. So you want to be able to, you know, uh, pass those courses if you're able to. And if not, that is definitely OK. I have taken I have retaken courses in my life just because I was not ready for school. But there's always courses that kind of get you ready for the next one. Uh, so I'll, I'll come back to this page, but I wanted to show this page right here. Uh, so this is just an example from the University of Oklahoma. Um, so right here, it kind of like shows you like all the specific classes you're going to take. So all these over here on the left side, they're called your basic courses. Basic courses is kind of what uh, the majority of all majors will take. So some of it could be a little bit different depending on the on the dean of the of the of the specific college or the curriculum and everything. It could change. But like these are courses that just kind of go and kind of give you like a, a, a the way that it kind of flows through it. And then over here on the right side is kind of like the major requirements and it gives you options of what you need to take. 
So right here, you need to take 15 hours and you need to take all of these. And then this, it gives you a, a list of courses and you have to pick five of them since each course is three credits usually. Um, and then on the right side, it kind of like makes it a lot more easier just to, and this when this one's kind of showing it if you're finishing in four years and you're a full-time student. So you're going to take English Comp 1, a math, a math course, a Forging Language, and then a Natural Science Lab. And then from there, you just hop on from this one to this one, for the second semester of that freshman year, and vice versa, you know, all the way down. So if your school is able to, like, show you these, you know, or your academic advisor, let them know, because for me, I would just like do check marks and highlight all these specific things, you know, and that helped me a lot just to kind of keep me uh, on the right track. But when I go to my advising session, I, I wouldn't waste my time. It's just like, hey, I want to take this, this and this without them that they will give you recommendations, of course, to kind of keep you in track, but it's just something to kind of look forward just in case. Um, and the yeah, no, just the, the, the end goal of this, you know, is just like, learning the pro the pro process of like advising you know what's going to be done during those sessions do your research on the the major and minors um for your program that you're going to be taking and it's okay to switch majors and stuff like that okay especially if you're in a four-year college it's okay to change but at some point you know probably like that second year second semester you kind of want to know what what you want you know but it's okay to change because i switched my major like maybe three or four times and it's totally fine uh, and then again, you know, just build that list of small and big goals for yourself. It's like, I want to graduate at this point in my life. I want to graduate in three or four years. I want to be able to graduate in this time to go to grad school, or I want to get, I want to do th these specific semesters and stuff and get an internship at, at some point in there in the middle. So, you know, just build those things up for yourself, you know, and these are kind of like things that kind of help you out and motivate you and then challenge you uh, as well too, you know, through your academic journey and everything. Um, but yeah, no, other than that, uh, that is it for me and hopefully you learned something and uh, it was uh, great to talk to you guys. Okay, thank you. Okay, so um, hello everybody. My name is Loyola Rankin. I am the other, other college success coach um, here with you today offering tips and tricks. Uh, okay, so I'm just gonna share my screen real quick. Um, and I also wanted to point out, I'm wearing the College Fund t-shirt, referring the College Fund flame and feather of information. Uh, so, yes, um, so yes, I went to school at Tohachi High School, uh, class of 2007. Uh, if you are from the Navajo Nation, go Cougars. Um, it was a reservation school for sure. Uh, and I'm talking like our volleyball coach was our calculus teacher. Um, not anything like a volleyball coach can't also be a calculus teacher, but she definitely did not major in math in college. Um, so there was a lot of substandard education, of course, and the funding just wasn't there to support um, in the academic realm. Uh, fortunately, I was able to attend Brown University, class of 2012 in Providence, Rhode Island. Um, took some time off and about 10 years and then went on to uh, obtain my master's degree at the Harvard Graduate School of Education, um, where I graduated last year in 2022. Uh, so this is just some information I'd like to share to uh, share with you around citations. Um, obviously, coming from Toachi, we didn't really have to worry about citations all that much, which was a problem because um, when I got to Brown, they were like, your writing is substandard. You're very lacking. You don't know how to properly cite what you're saying. Um, and I used to be like, well, I'm saying the truth because I said it. Like, <laughs> why would I say something that wasn't true? But you know, academics, they do focus in on how you can write and portray uh, what you're trying to say. Um, so uh, let's get into it. First and foremost, academic citations. Um, the top three we tend to find, well, first off, academic citations are um, what helps the reader identify the original source of an idea, image, information um, that is referred to in your work. 
your work in this instance would be like an academic article or sorry, a paper you have to write for a class. Let's say you're taking History 101, they want you to write a paper. This is where you start to cite the different academic um, journals and information and authors, people who came up with ideas and you're citing them specifically. Now there's different types of citation formats depending on which um, department that you're in, which you know field that you're in. Um, typically what you're gonna come across is APA, MLA, and Chicago. So uh, APA is psychological association. So often used in psychology, education, some of the sciences. Um, I use APA a lot. It's what I'm most familiar with, honestly. Um, this one use in-text citation. So you write exactly what the, not exactly, but you write the idea, parentheses, the author's name, comma, the year in parentheses. And then you, at the end of the paper, you have the bibliography, uh, which is located here, um, starting with Grady JS, and that's this proper citation. Uh, MLA is Modern Language Association. Typically, if you're working inside of like different humanities, um, they might prefer MLA. Uh, similar, except this time you use author and the page number of the work that you're citing not the actual like year it was cited or year it was created. Um, some people prefer MLA. Um, honestly, I like APA because indicating the year kind of gives you an idea of what people were saying around that time. So if I quoted something from 1867 versus something from 2003, very different ideas <laughs> on what was happening inside of education and knowledge at that time. Uh, finally, the one of the big three is Chicago, also known as Turbian. Someone called it this, and I thought it was the most pretentious thing. I was like, just call it Chicago. Come on, man. Like, please, no need to confuse everybody. Uh, this one you're going to typically use in business, history, fine arts. Uh, they prefer to use Chicago. Uh, very similar. This one uses author, year, and page number. Uh, and a bibliography at the end. So from these three, MLA is the only one that uses a work cited um, and APA in Chicago use a bibliography. And that's that giant list at the end of every article that states like where they got the information or sorry, what citations they're using, um, who said what, when did they say it, uh, where was it published, what year was it published, um, where they can locate it, you know, that type of information. Uh, and then, of course, with other academic citations, there's other societies. Um, so you have Political Science Association, the American Sociological Association, Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers, IEEE -E -E citation. Uh, if you do international publications, they might prefer you use one style over another. Um, so once you start getting into that little niche, like narrowing down where it is that you want to, I guess, work, um, where you want to gain and access knowledge, uh, this kind of helps you understand like what it is they're trying to say. Like who said it? When did they say it? Where can you find it to get their actual works? Um, honestly, I find this very annoying. <laughs> but it is part of that academic process. Um, so definitely, you know, find it in YouTube, find this interesting if you can. There are a lot of online websites uh, to help you manage the different types of citations that you're using. Um, and it's definitely helpful to like get those types of, um, I guess, programs available. So one of them I used in my master's program uh, is called Zotero. Um, Zotero, Z-O-T-E-R-O, uh, is an online kind of like research assistant. Uh, what you can do is you can install Zotero. Uh, you, first of all, you would create an account, and then you can install Zotero uh, as a extension. So as you can see, I have Zotero here, and it's pinned. So anytime you go to a website or if you're reading an article and you're like, hey, this would be really great for a paper I'm writing, uh, you just click the hyperlink and it'll automatically save that information to Zotero. 
Uh, you can go in, clean it out later on. This definitely helps if you're working with like a thesis or a dissertation. Um, typically that's in like the master's level. Um, you need to write a dissertation in order to get your PhD. So this is kind of the realm Julio is in. Um, I wrote a thesis for my undergrad program and this would have been so helpful. <laughs> like it definitely also does the different citations for you. So you don't have to like fumble around and be like, where does the period go? Where is the like parentheses in this? And I do know some faculty will ding you in points if you don't use the proper citation. Um, others don't care. So <laughs> I guess just get a feel for what type of faculty member uh, you're working with. And when you're writing a paper, they will tell you what citation style to use. If they don't, ask. Be like, hey, what citation do you want? And sometimes they'll be like, your choice, use whatever. Um, and in that case, I guess just pick your favorite and run with that. Um, the only thing is just make sure it's consistent. Uh, you will be dinged with points if it's not consistent. So if you're switching between APA, MLA, and Chicago, throwing in some other societies in there, they're not going to like that. So definitely if you pick one, stick with it, run with it, it's going to be fine. Uh, okay, so finding academic citations. You're like, all right, so I have a paper to write. Where do I go? Um, first and foremost, you can ask your faculty member. Be like, they usually give you a wide berth on what to write about, which is also very liberating and also very annoying. <laughs> it's like, tell me what to write about it and I will write about it. And they're like, no, you have to pick the assignment. So if they're like, okay, I want you to write a paper about um, higher education which is an assignment I did get. And I was like, well, okay, what about higher education? They're like, I don't know, you figure it out. What, do you, what are you interested in? And so you can kind of talk with your faculty a little bit more about it. And they've been in the field so long, they can start throwing books at you and just be like, here, read this book by so-and-so if you're interested in Native Americans and higher ed, or read this book if you're interested in low-income students attending Ivy League schools. Um, you know, definitely getting a feel with like what type of theme or thesis you're going with. Uh, you can always check book references, book citations, Google Scholar is amazing. Um, article citations, that's definitely your bread and butter. You're going to love it. Uh, and then of course, go to the librarian. <laughs> Use your librarians. Your librarians are beautiful, beautiful like institutions on campus. They can help you find the resources um, definitely if you're going for something very niche, like if you are researching Native Americans in a specific type of field, they're probably not going to have a lot of information on it. Um, so definitely, I mean, just depending on like what, you know, field you're going into and what year and era, uh, but definitely ask a librarian. They are a wealth of knowledge. And also if they don't have the book, the whatever uh, resource you need at that library, they can do it in our library alone. They will pull that book from another library and boom, there you go. There you are physically in your hands. Um, so definitely lose your, use your uh, librarians as assistants. Um, one thing I will show you is Google Scholar. If you have already seen this, I'm sorry, but definitely if you haven't, it's fantastic. So you just Google Google Scholar. <laughs> um, I always do that. I'm like, just save it as a desktop, you boomer. And I'm like, no, it's cool. I'll just Google Google Scholar. It's totally fine. Um, so let's say I don't know exactly what I want, but I want to talk about supporting Native American students, period. Just tell me how to support Native students. And so you'll see in Google Scholar here, it's anytime. Anytime means like whenever anything was ever written. And you're like, well, I kind of already got a handle of like supporting Native students pre-1919, nice, <laughs> pre-2015. Let's see what's happening recently. So this clicking since 2019, this will show me all articles 2019 to today. Uh, so obviously here you have Beyond the Asterisk, which was a big one in higher ed of like how to uh, understand Native American students attending higher ed. Uh, here's a really interesting article. Our kids aren't dropping out. They're being pushed out. Uh, so this is talking about racial microaggressions in school. Uh, we're talking over here, uh, retention and intervention study of undergraduates at UNM. So this is a very specific state college or university. Um, 
And this was talking about, you know, mental health, substance abuse um, in higher education for supporting the whole student. I was like, okay, well, it doesn't say Native American specifically, but we, we can juxtapose the two together and see like if there's any overlap happening. Now, what I was talking about with the asterisks, uh, not with the asterisks, with the citation, uh, if you click here, uh, it'll take you to the journal article and where it's published. So this is a chapter in a book. Um, this is this article or this chapter is by Katie Johnston Goodstar and Ross Belor Wilholt. Uh, it's in this book. This is when it was published. It's 18 pages. This is where you can find the ebook. Here's an abstract. Really great to like see like, all right, this is a very interesting uh, chapter title. But let me read the asterisks to see if it's talking about what I think it's talking about. And sometimes it's not. <laughs> and that's okay. You're like, all right, so that didn't go where I wanted to. Uh, let's say, oh, I wanted to talk about higher education, those who are in college. This book is talking about high school. And I'm like, well, that's a really interesting article, but that's not what I'm looking for. Um, so, all right, so then we say UNM, we know that is a um, uh, state college, so, or state university, again. All right, so this is something we're interested in. Uh, get access, when you have access via the library or your school's Wi-Fi, it'll most likely give you access to all of these articles. Um, I'm at my home Wi-Fi, so I don't have anything like that right now, so I can't read any of these articles anymore. Well, sad face. Um, but if you look through Google Books, you can kind of see like um, a little snippets as well. So that's always helpful. Now, what I was talking about with citations. Okay, so uh, let me, so we see here where it's available. It's available near me, so that's great. Uh, we see similar books. That's also great too. But one of the ones that I found really helpful, especially if you're like finding not a lot of re like citations, is this section down here. Uh, so this book or this section of this book has been cited by 70 different articles. So you click there. And so you're like, oh, look at all of these different um, articles that cited that specific chapter about UNM. And so you can kind of look through and like see like, okay, Native Americans in higher ed, ecological systems perspective. Interesting. That might be interesting. So it's really easy to go down into a wormhole of like finding specifically what you're looking for. So that's always helpful. Uh, the other thing that's really helpful here is related articles. Um, this is something that is very similar, but not the same. So definitely this will probably be talking about like first Native Americans persistence. It might also be talking about first gen. It might also talk about um, substance use. Um, you know, this is all just retention and, and intervention in undergrad. Uh, lastly, this all four versions thing. So let's say you're working from home and you don't have access. Well, if you look through the different versions here, you might, um, get lucky and like find um, an article version that you can like review. That's always helpful. Um, and then one of the things that's helpful about this too is like once you get the article, if you scroll down and use their bibliography or their work cited, boom, you just have access to a whole new list of different resources that you can use for your paper. So that's a lot of information but that is one of the tips and tricks that I learned. Uh, and like, I'm not gonna lie, when I was in high school, writing the paper was the scariest part to me. I was like, ah, how, how am I gonna write 25 pages? I don't even understand. Um, but definitely using Google Scholar is one of the best methods I found. Um, and then finally, reading academic books and articles. So you get assigned 17 articles to read in a week. That's all your classes. That's all your information. It's a lot of time. Um, so one trick that I was taught was to read the introduction, um, either from the article, there's an introduction section. It's probably like a couple of paragraphs or there's an introduction section of a book. 
read that, take some detailed notes, then read the conclusion. So you're reading the very beginning and you're reading the very end. Take detailed notes and see what overlaps between those two. Now, if there are key themes that you're still uncertain about, then you read the body of the work. It's tricky because in my mind, I'm like, no, you have to read every single word, every single time, read every single sentence. Don't do it. You're going to waste your time. It's a lot of time. Like reading 13 pages takes me like, I don't know, three hours with academic work because it's so dense. Your mind gets tired and that's okay. But say yourself the aggravation, read the introduction, read the conclusion, um, take notes. That's the key part of this is that you're not just reading, you're active reading. Um, find out where the similarities are. If there are any concepts that you're still struggling with, then you go back and get the details. Um, this will really help you summarize um, books and articles quickly without reading it word for word. All right, so let's go ahead and move into questions. Let's stop share here. That was a lot. <laughs> So definitely appreciate your time. Um, so yeah, feel free to drop any questions you have in the chat. You can raise your hand. You can come off mute. Um, all methods are welcome. Okay, so Kylie wants to know if we will be emailed the survey, laptop is about to die. Oh no, that's unfortunate, I'm so sorry. Um, yeah, we can email that out. Uh, we have the registration link of everyone who registered, so we can definitely get that out. But feel free to drop that in the chat to Adriana now if you have it. It'll also be um, published on our social media. So for those of you who don't know, this is a good spot for us to talk about this. <laughs> um, Native Pathways on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok. Um, Native Pathways is our social media account with the college fund. So that's us. <laughs> I know a lot of people get confused on the two because we have an Insta college fund and then we have a Native Pathways. Native Pathways is a part of the college fund, but it's the student services. So we'll be posting on our stories there. Mm -hmm. uh, Tiffany asks, "What? where is the best way to try and find scholarships? For me, it was the um, financial aid office and then other scholars. Um, just talking to friends, they would be like, oh, I applied for this scholarship or have you seen this scholarship? And I think that really talks to what uh, Julio was talking about of like making connections, networking. You can ask anybody where they can find scholarships, like ask your academic advisor, ask your faculty, ask the financial aid, ask your friends. Um, I've applied to some random scholarships. <laughs> But, you know, every little bit helps. Friends were very helpful. So, yeah, definitely. Uh, Julio, Adriana, did you? Definitely. Oh, um, your, utilize your student services. Also, look at your support system. Um, you know, like Julio mentioned, um, your friends, co-students, co student, what are they called? Co-workers. Peers. Peers, I don't know why I was like co-students. Um, even family can help too. If you just tell like somebody in your family, you know, like, hey, I'm in school right now. I'm looking for funding and stuff. Sometimes you'll have that auntie or grandma or your mom or dad or uncle or whoever will go the extra mile to find and advocate for scholarships and funding for you. And um, I mean, for me, I know I definitely utilize Facebook a lot or social media. You know, you'll, if you follow a lot of like, you know, your tribal nation news, or sometimes they'll have like a, a swap meet group or something you can look at and they share different things, right? I know a lot of scholarships that I applied for, I found through Facebook because people were sharing them and everything. So, and even following like your tribal office, education office, or following other tribal or native um, based organizations or scholarship organizations, you know, we share with the college fund, we share a lot of different scholarship funding opportunities. 
uh, Cobell is also another one, um, you know, Coca-Cola, there's a scholarship. So there's a lot of different areas you can find them. So definitely we have a big list on our website too. So thank you, Julia, for posting that. Yeah, and the link that I posted on the chat, that's on our website, and those are our external uh, scholarships. So, of course, you know, we have the full uh, circle scholarship, um, and and that's open currently still, you know, but we already kind of already gave uh, the priority list scholarships already. But this, I always give this to uh, the students needing more scholarships or didn't get anything, you know, then is the external scholarships page. And there's like hundreds of scholarships on there just to check um other websites to kind of like check on from your side and do research is like use fast web uh fast web um usually for that one it's just a mixture of a bunch of things but you know you could always filter the specific things on what like what program you're at what school and stuff like that uh and then other opportunities you know just looking around where you're currently living and everything uh maybe some businesses or companies are giving out scholarships banks and all that good stuff and then, you know, check with your tribe as well, too, to see if there are any scholarship opportunities as well, too. So, um, yeah. Any other questions? Um, anything to note or curious curiosities? Okay, great. There are definitely, everyone has tips and tricks as college students. I think a lot of what I learned um, was during undergrad from grad students who were like, yeah, don't read that whole book. Like, that's ridiculous. Um, and, you know, always ask other peers, faculty, you know, staff who work at your college, you know, what are some trip, tip, trip, I can't even talk anymore. What are some tips and tricks that you had that help you survive um, or thrive in the academic spaces? And they'll be always happy to share a story, I think. Yes, definitely. A lot of it is experience-based. You won't learn about it until you go through it. But the other last trip, I can't even say it anymore either. Tips or tricks that I can give to you is take advantage of those student discounts. You'll have them for a short amount of time while you're in school and everything definitely utilize those you just need to use a lot of the time your school email and you'll save a few extra bucks on some food or spotify or something yeah i was about to talk about spotify too that's a good one and then also amazon i think you get amazon prime for discount as well just in case you need like school supplies and or just quick uh quicker shipping and stuff depending where you're at that's another good one uh and again you know just utilizing that student id you know like sometimes movie theaters have like discounts as well you know to go through that and you know restaurants nearby and everything's like hey you get a student discount it's like and it happens a lot too so sometimes i don't know about it but it's useful as well um and i think loyola was talking about this too that this is not discount related but just like, you know, you know, getting through school and everything, you know, talk to students or other peers that are, have been in school like for two years or more if possible, because they, they've gone through the same steps that you've about about to go through, or they know a little bit other like tips and tricks as well to kind of share with you as well. Because for me, you know, I did not know a lot. So I had to go for others, you know, other students even higher than me that have been in the third or fourth year. And it's just very useful as well too, so. Just keep kind of keep that in mind. Hey, we have another question about what's the best way to get discounted books? Mm -hmm. I love that question because that was like my favorite time to, I guess, in the beginning of the semester when you're looking for books and you're like looking at all these different tabs. So my advice, a lot of time you'll find discounted priced books away from your school bookstore. Um, you know, they might have used options or rental options, or you can buy the whole book if you want to. I would suggest not to just because I know there's so many more deals you can get out there. Chegg is a really good website to use. Um, 
They rent out the book to you. They have a lot of different options. They have eBooks as well. Amazon is another good one. Um, you know, usually when you're looking for your books, it's good to have several different tabs open so you can kind of cross compare with the different prices. And then also sometimes look at your library. You know, we'll definitely advocate for school libraries. Uh, sometimes they'll have loanable books offered. Um, and then some student services will also have book loan, media loan programs as well. I know with Fort Lewis College, we had a Native American Center. So definitely that's also another place to look at a Native American Center. Um, they'll have like a media loan out program where you, you can go over there on a certain day and then look for this book or something, but definitely look at all your options, try to stay away from the bookstore, but then sometimes the bookstore might have the most affordable options. So it's really good to like cross compare. Yeah, I definitely would advise if you are doing research and looking at different websites like Amazon Check or any other types of book dealers, um, go on incognito mode, uh, especially if also if you're looking for flights. Um, definitely go into incognito mode on your web browser uh, because it'll, it won't track what you're trying to do. Um, and so it won't increase prices on you, which is one of the big issues. Um, would also encourage using public libraries. Um, those are definitely places where they can do interlibrary loans. The big thing about those using libraries is that uh, you have to know in advance. So once you get your syllabus, use Adriana's tools, plan it out, know when you need that book by, and definitely go check it out at the libraries. Um, I asked people who have taken the class before if they still had their books, and sometimes I got lucky. Um, so making those friends is always helpful. The only one that just, oh, just irks me to know in are science books. Because you know there's always a new edition, there's always something new in science, and you have to have like a key code or something to complete assignments. And that is a, I, I'm a strong advocate that that is a gimmick. And they're just trying to get more money out of you. Like, it's crazy. It's annoying. I hate it so much. So that might be additional costs to look at too and talk to your financial, or not your, uh, your academic advisor about. Um, because sometimes they have syllabi on hand. Um, when I was an academic advisor, I would keep syllabus and just be like, oh, this was the syllabus last year. Um, let's take a look at what kind of books you might be expected to buy. Um, and then you could always include that in your financial aid. So definitely, if you are getting scholarships, you know, you could say like, well, this is going to be used for this book specifically, um, especially those chemistry books. Like, I think I tried taking chem one time and it was like $800 for one book. And I was like, I don't need to know chemistry. It's fine. I'll watch a YouTube video. It's okay. Um, but yeah, those are the biggest problems, I think, is the ones where they have that like code you have to use. And Additionally, then, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, and just, you know, just another uh, option as well, too, if everything else kind of fails and stuff, ask your professor for help and support. There was one time I could not afford a book and I was like, I just don't have the money. The The professor out of nowhere is like, here's a code, you got it, or here's a book they could share. And that, and that just depends, you know, that varies depending on who you're with. Order, but that's a last resort type of thing maybe they have the book of course they're the one that chose it <laughs> uh maybe they could like you know print it print it out or something or they could scan it or something then put it on the on the specific uh database that they use or platform for schooling if they put homework on online and stuff like that so uh just another option just in case you know because it it has happened to me too and it's okay to ask for help definitely utilize that professor because we you you have paid for tuition, so you paid that professor in some way. So just think of it that they're another support to use just in case. So yeah, just FYI. Yeah, and it could be it can be difficult to bring up those struggles. Um because you know it you don't want to be like, well, I'm struggling, or but people you get a reputation of like, wow, you're always struggling. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> even in like a virtual space too of like just being honest and being like hey I don't know if I can afford this book I don't know if I want to buy this book like it just doesn't seem useful the other thing too is um noting how long you're gonna have the book because I definitely have bought books where I'm like we bought it for one class 
and never used it again. And I was like, why would I buy a book if I'm never going to use it again? So definitely like utilizing, you know, the libraries and resources is always helpful. Um, book rentals, definitely. They get kind of shady sometimes just depending on which one you go to because they'll start like marking you down for like, oh, you returned this late or that has more marks in it than when we gave it to you. And I'm like, well, that's rude. <laughs> I gave it to you the way I got it. Um, and then there are some times when I would really enjoy a book that we read in college and I would just buy it myself, like <laughs> go back later and buy it. I'm like, this is something I definitely want to keep my hands on. Um, but yeah, definitely don't be afraid to like, say you are struggling um, and you'll find that other people are struggling too and they may lean on you as a resource and say like you know hey Tiffany just using you Tiffany because they're on my screen <laughs> did you take this class last year did you keep the book or you know how was it is it worth it um, I, I definitely had some people who are like don't buy the book like we didn't use it at all like the other thing too you can use is google books as I noted to uh, belay the asterisk, you can review a book on Google and it's enough to get you through a conversation, like a classroom conversation. Like you don't even have to read the whole book. Okay, that's another kind of like tip. I don't know if you're cheating yourself, um, but you can Google the book name and then a review. <laughs> it's another thing I learned from a grad student too. They're like, why would I want to read this book from a white heterosexual cis male like, I don't need that in my mind anymore. I don't need that on my shelf anymore. Um, so she, they told me, they were like, yeah, just Google the book's name slash review. And if you're only doing a review of that book, you don't need to buy it. Like, for example, I took a literature class, literature, nice, liter <laughs> literature class about Native American literature, uh, Almanac of the Dead. It's like 800 pages. I, uh, it's a really good book, but I can't read the whole thing. Like I'm not going to be able to, especially if you have like five other classes you're reading for. So, you know, just Almanac, Almanac of the Dead review. And then just pick out the key themes, kind of get some discussion points in there. Um, I would definitely look at the syllabus again and see what you're going to be using it for, like how long you're going to be using it. Um, and then just decide then if it's worth buying as well, or even renting, if it's worth the trouble. Yeah, any other questions or concerns? Oh yeah, copy the pages too. That's technically illegal, but like if the faculty's doing it, <laughs> they'll put it on the course, like, like Canva or what's the other one they do? Blackboard. Blackboard, Moodle is another one. Moodle, yeah. They'll put it on the course thing and they'll be like, here, don't even worry about it. But the thing about that is then you have to read it. <laughs> so you went through all the trouble. You're like, shoot, no, I have to read it. All right. Well, thank you so much for hanging on. Uh, we are 12 minutes over, so I definitely appreciate y'all being here. Um, if you have any additional questions or concerns, please do feel free to contact us. Um, we're always happy to assist and help.